and welcome to The Mind of a Skeptical Leftist, the podcast where I cover uh, progressive politics, left-wing philosophy, and critical thinking. Uh, today I'm joined by Brandy from True North Radio, uh, and oh. we're practically neighbors. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. Yes, absolutely. I'm happy to be here. I am really happy to see uh, new, kind of new left indie grassroots media taking hold. So <laughs> thank you. we can get some more of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess first off, uh, uh, to get people to know you a little bit, uh, what's your background? Uh, what got you into uh, whatever you're doing now, True North Radio? And uh, yeah. I guess your political ideology. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, this is loaded. <laughs> yeah, loaded. That's right. uh, yeah. Um I've I've lived in a uh, North Battleford, uh Saskatchewan, like my whole life. I grew up here. Um uh, my family is here. And I mean people from high school who know me, they'll know that like I've always been this way. Oh, is that right? Um yeah. <laughs> I it's it's hypocrisy and injustice is something that you grow up with when you live in North Battleford. <laughs> so it's very glaring. And I think at this point, I feel like, you know, certainly the Sanders campaign uh, relit my fire if it was indeed dimming. Right. Uh, and at the same time, I met with some really cool people from the North Battleford, the Battleford's Saskatchewan NDP. Okay. And uh, at the same, you know, um, through them and I think their actions, well, their deeds, is that a lot of the constituency rally around Truth and Reconciliation Commission at calls for action. Right. So I was really attracted to them. Like, um, you know, I saw they do good work. Uh, they've done a lot of help with like naming on Mark Graves and okay. stuff. And they've been doing that for a long time. Right. Not and just new stuff. eh? Like yeah. Yeah, not just jumping on a bandwagon, hey, yeah, and no, putting really. an orange sticker and all. Um, <laughs> yeah, but actually, like, not performative politics, right? Right, like, right. And uh, so I, I was very impressed with the like with the constituency and um, with the actions and the deeds that they do in Saskatchewan. Okay. So I was like, became a card carrying member of the oh, NDP, and it works. was the first time I've been a card carrying member of anything. But what I think I saw was that they actually follow up with real. Yeah. Right? Because yeah, like, that makes a big difference. <laughs> it does. I'm like, no, they're actually doing stuff. What? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, and I think that's what happens in a rural place. Like when I talk to people about politics, they always naysay me, hey, like, you know, oh, they're all the same. It's all divisive and it's all this. The fact is, is that like, me and you are talking right here on this Saskatchewan podcast. <laughs> yeah. Regional, local, city, right. smaller places. Like there are people everywhere who want help and they want to get her done. And that's the point is that you have to have some kind of infrastructure to do so. Yeah. And some kind of link and some kind of coalition and some kind of group of people where you can get a lot of voices going. Yeah. 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 It's really hard to do something if it's just yourself doing it. Right. Yeah. You have, you have to, I mean, in Regina, I've been looking for more groups around too. Right. Like I'm always right. trying to find a group. Okay. Well, what can we do together? What kind of activities, what kind of organizing can we do to, yeah. you know, let's improve this situation locally. I mean, that's all I can personally do right now. <laughs> so. Exactly. And, and I mean, community building and like solidarity and like coming together this takes actually like you know meeting people and i know that's hard <laughs> and like being yeah. somewhere and like uh, together and and i think the thing about like politics is so it is it's so divisive and so crazy like everything well yeah especially the the broad bigger you get right like the more it's it's so divided nationally and then we have a smaller kind of microcosm of that on the provincial scale. But then when you start getting into like municipal politics or like local uh, politics, then you can start, you know, maybe you yeah. can make a difference. You can, I get to know my city council or I can potentially. Yeah. Right. John, John Fendura is like, uh, I don't know. He appro appears to be a pretty conservative person. So I'm not okay. sure, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, totally. But that's like, it's so divided nationally, but, 
maybe we can actually do something more close to home. And it's, and, and, and I, I love that because it's like, it doesn't have to be a grand scale to make big change and to make waves and to make connections that live on. Right. And that's the thing about regional and local stuff is that, you know, you're, you're, it's like the concept of mutual aid in a sense where it's like, you're directly helping. Yeah. Yeah. And they see you, people see you. They say, Oh, there's her she's with, you know, she's hanging around the NDP people again, <laughs> but they're directly helping. Right. They're directly yeah, offering right. something tangible and like, yeah. So yeah, I've always been this way, but I think that in 2016, when Sanders opened his mouth, I was like, I'm a burner too. <laughs> that's right. it, no, neoliberalism that's is a scourge. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> and it's done this to our society. Yeah. Um, you know, by constantly emptying the coffers and, uh, I'm just seeing a revivification at the local and the grassroots level and people becoming more and more interested. And that's how you grow a movement. You know, nothing's going to happen overnight. And right. I think people sort of want that. Like, <laughs> like something's going to yeah. happen, you know, yeah, but it's great. like the job of putting the, your pen, your name to the legislation is very boring and it takes a really long time. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you have to go through a lot of, of annoyance and frustration to, to like do it. But then if you do get it done, um, you're impacting lives like in Saskatchewan or, you know, right. and people, you know, so uh, yeah. genuinely improving the neighbors, your neighbor's life. Yeah. <laughs> and that would improve your life. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you're kind of seeing a resurgence of that community solidarity feeling. And I think I felt it with the Sanders campaign when a lot of our Canadian, uh, when can some Canadian MPs and some of our like candidates that we had in Saskatchewan ended up going and getting to organize with Bernard, you know, right. with the campaign on the ground in Seattle or with the campaign on the ground and get that valuable, not only being with like comrades, these, some of these people are fighting for their life. Right. right. And uh, so you, you just, you, and, and it, and it kind of makes you want to do it more. I okay, think like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and that people that. are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you kind of want that, that solidarity. It's, it's good. So. Yeah, for sure. So what got True North Radio started? True North Radio 2016 ish. It was like late 2016 when Joe Hargrave cut STC. Oh, okay. So yeah. we have an STC right here in the Battlefords. We had a place, you know, if you wanted to go on the bus to Saskatoon, you went down to the STC in the Battlefords and that's where you went. And uh, you got a safe, like affordable, reliable, on time, you know, with a bathroom uh, yep. trip to Saskatoon <laughs> to see your cousins for the weekend, you know. Yep. <laughs> um, and that was like such a blow to the community here because there's so many elderly people and like seniors right. of fixed income who used STC to get to cancer treatment and stuff. Yeah. So it really screwed up healthcare. Uh, our yep. like shipments of prescriptions like methadone or special uh, things when, you know, uh, emergency EMT type pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. used to get here via, we knew they would be here. Um, and so there, it was just a heavy blow and there was nobody talking about it. Right. Um, they were kind of taking Joe Hargrave bomb a ride. Like that's not acceptable. So yeah. I got mad. <laughs> so I, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. So we had a, we had a group of activists and the most wonderful and radical activists you'll ever find are like women over 65. <laughs> you are not going to want to have with these women. Yeah. And they were so great. And we kind of had a campaign and we got the, you know, Saskatchewan NTP involved. Nicole Rancourt was our, our buddy MLA and she came down and she participated. Like it was, uh, nice. it was a really nice showing of solidarity between us and PA. Um, and. Uh, I did a bunch of videos. Well, my husband and I, he's an artist. He's trained as an artist, mixed media, oh, cool. like video, audio. He's a producer, music production is, and maybe some film and stuff. Um, and I said, dude, we have to, we have to do something that's going to like galvanize how ridiculous Joel, Joe, Joe Hargrave is in this moment in time. Right. So we started True North Radio. <laughs> And we made a few, you know, different little commercials and a few different things that like tried to bring as much attention as we could For to sure. it. 
Yeah, that's um, cool. And I think we won some hearts because I know a lot of people were very disgusted that Joe Hargrave wasn't being challenge more on telling people to bum a ride when we have so many missing people in the mur- like missing <laughs> d- missing and murdered indigenous women part of that yeah. too is that there's no transportation right yeah you um, take away a, a like you say you take away a safe a way for them to travel and yeah. then you know i mean there was enough of a problem before that so what are you going to see when you take away the safe means of transportation Exactly. And, you know, I went to Herb Cox's office. I dressed up like an angel. I said I was oh, the wow. angel of STC and I was there to, to put on a show. And all of these women who are so radical and they're older and stuff. And I said, just let me direct you. I'm going to do a Christmas story play, <laughs> but it's right. going to be about Brad Wall and losing STC. <laughs> and they said, okay, Brandy. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> they let me and my husband videotaped it and stuff. And he did the production, the post-production on it. And awesome. uh, it was awesome. <laughs> and after that, I, as an angel, marched in with my squad. And they really were into the office of, of local women over 65. Like, it wasn't scary. Like, I think sometimes people <laughs> think activists are so scary. And it's like, ah, these are like grandmas. Right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're not just a bunch yeah. of uh, angry 20-somethings with bats and wearing all black, right? No. <laughs> like, under no circumstances. And that's one of the biggest propaganda media thing. It's like, yeah. these activists are like, you know, does everybody have their... Do you have your walker? Can we get... You know, like, we're... <laughs> like, we're... Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're trying to love each other and, and, and prove it by doing something. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, we but we talked to Herb Cox and I went in there and I said, and I showed him all of the literature, like Highway 16 isn't something new. The Highway of Tears is something that's been talked about for a long time right, and reported right. on, right? Um, going in there and saying like, this is a situation whereby we losing transportation where we could be looking at something really, really ugly, dude. You know, and yeah. he looked so offended and so like out of his element, like he had no idea what I was talking about. And that was part of my kind of getting emboldened too. It's like, why do we have representatives and leaders who don't understand the issues? Right. Like yeah. in any way, other than neoliberal sign a check, right? Yeah, well that's just it. All 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 they think is that this is a cost. Like the thing about the STC was which for uh, non-Saskatchewan listeners, it's the Saskatchewan Transportation right. Corporation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it provided a service of right. a bus system throughout Saskatchewan. And they stopped, they, they, it was always framed like, well, this is a company that's losing money, right? right? But this is not a company designed to make money. This is a service you're providing the citizens of your province. Like, what are you talking about? You don't need to make money. You should be just trying to get it the best service you can get for your people. <laughs> exactly. And and that was the lie that I don't think we could crack through at that time. Right, yeah. Like, that was the major lie. And that's a neoliberal austerity lie. Yep, exactly. And for someone like me who I, like, I study history. I love uh, at the University of Saskatchewan. I absolutely adore history and I love it, like ancient history and military okay. history. Nice. And it's like, oh, you're the, you're the only lady in here. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. I'm like, I know, bring it on. I want to hear about it. Right so like, and I loved it so much. And um, from like that experience of education, which I never finished because we were so indebted and had kids and got to like, I was like, Hey, um, but yeah, yeah it, it's, yeah, it's not. <laughs> yeah no it's, i'm not a re- i'm a regular saskatchewan person though right too, right but right another i wanted to ask you too about yeah. uh some of your more recent stuff uh discussing like uh human uh prisons or inmates for humanity or stuff like that like um yeah how did you get involved with prison abolition stuff and inmates right no <laughs> that's a good question um <laughs> Yeah, well, True North Radio was like this brainchild that I kind of came up with with my constituency, too. Like, they were like, thumbs up, Brandy. We love this so much. Um, But, you know, there was a cooling off period because it seemed to me right before COVID hit, I felt like, is all lost? 
You know, like I had such a deep depression because it was like people were voting in the Sask party, even though they've shit on us for like ever. Um, yeah. There was a feeling, a general feeling of like, oh, you know, they won. Well, nobody won anything. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it was depressing for like, I think like our constituency and I know other like EDAs and, you know, people around Saskatchewan that this was very like harsh. And right. then when COVID hit, it's like, oh, okay. You know, like uh, we got clowns running the show in Saskatchewan. <laughs> we got a circus now of clowns. Um, and it's really showing them for what they are. They can't function. Yeah. They can only function under the playbook of the neoliberal agenda. They can't function outside of that. And I think yeah. their true colors are being seen now because of so many people in healthcare, education, people who have kids in school. It's more than just STC now because STC yeah. really was a way the poor travel. Right. So right. nobody wants to be associated with the poor <laughs> traveling. Like, but yeah. healthcare, education, these yeah. things are major, major players. So I, I rebooted True North Radio. Um, because I felt the time was ripe to do so. And I also, I don't know if you're, uh, you're familiar with Slavoj Žižek. Yep. Yep. Slavoj, my favorite philosopher. He put out a book called pandemic in like two seconds. Like he literally <laughs> wrote it in like a week of probably right. cocaine friends. <laughs> and, and they released it in true Marxist style. And I got a PDF and I was reading this during COVID. I get kids are home. It was a weird, weird dreamlike time right. for me. Like I felt very isolated. I felt very like not knowing. So when Slavoj hit this book, hit the presses too, it was almost like we have the ability to really galvanize global right. issues in this moment because you're going to be seeing these governments who have no idea what to do other than follow the playbook yeah they're yeah. not relevant anymore so yeah yeah and they were i mean saskatchewan government in particular was incredibly reliant on oil so then as soon as when the pandemic hit and I, they're out of their depth already and right. then and then the oil price drops into negative territory <laughs> Yeah. And and it just it they have absolutely no ability to understand how to function in this no. scenario, right? No. Like if it was a joke to me before, like now, I mean, it's absurd. <laughs> and yeah. I think well, like reading the reading pandemic, reading Slavoj, and saying like to me when the, my mind, maybe I'm a weirdo, but my mind first goes to the permanent underclass first. Whenever there's shit hitting the fan with the rest of us, the shit already hit the fan. Oh, yeah. With yeah. The permanent underclass. Like they're like not. So I, I, I took a risk and I jumped in with both feet and I emailed Beyond Prison Walls Canada, okay. uh, which is run by an advocate by the name of Sherry Meyer. Okay. She uh, is a justice uh, graduate. Um, and she's, you know, taking, she's furthering herself along in law. And I, you know, I think one day she hopes to be a lawyer. Uh, she could be my lawyer. She's awesome. <laughs> um, but I, you kind of jumped in with both feet and I sent her this letter. I didn't know what to expect back, but I said, you know, this is me. My name is Brandy. True North Radio is my show. I'm here to amplify issues. And if anybody wants to speak to me, Hey, I'm happy to do it. Nice. And uh, yeah. And then I later on, you know, and I'm, she, she's, you know, and here she's got a lot of mutual friends in justice who I know. And so right. it ends up being like that six degrees of separation. Like you like Saskatchewan, here we are. <laughs> um, yeah. And we're sort of getting more connected with each other and we're sort of seeing, you know, what we can do. So that was my, that's what I did. So I ended up getting a call from the late Corey Gardinal now. But right. Corey was a decades long um, activist, like poet, warrior, protector. Right. Uh, in Saskatchewan and across, across the nation. Um, like someone who just, and, you know, so for me almost to have that weird interaction where I got to like get, get interviews and get phone calls with how are people organizing on the inside? 
Right, like what right. are people on the inside doing? How are they going to, what kind of solidarity do they need from us on the outside? Like how, right. you know, and all of that. And so that re- rebooting True Earth Radio is probably the best thing I did. Right. Because um, yeah. we were able during COVID-19 um, to get in and get people more aware of this like the austerity agenda in the jails is like this is hell it's a hellscape Corey. it's so like yeah so like to get in to show to have that um so that's what like you know and through that movement and through Corey, i I met a lot of abolitionists Uh, i met a lot of yeah and it's like i felt at home with them because they can't how are you going to say like 90% of people incarcerated and on like on remand, we have a really buggered up remand right, legislation yeah. here. It's a very bizarre. It's meant to keep heads in the jails and yeah. show worth so that the neoliberal government can cash in on that. Yeah. That's um, right. So yeah, <laughs> this is yeah, where I, I am now. I, I remember there was a, uh, when Brad wall was still in charge, there was a, a protest. There was, a, I think I've been a hunger strike because the food in the jails in Saskatchewan were just, it was just atrocious. And, and I mean, because uh, we're in Saskatchewan, it's very Sask party, very conservative. You got a lot of push, push and pull. And Brad Wall said something of like, what was it? Oh, well, then they shouldn't have gone into jail in the first place. Right. Just completely ignoring the context that leads to all this situ- stuff. Like, exactly. Yeah. And, and being like racist. Yeah. Being like like openly racist. racist. Yeah. And, and having people be fine with that. Right. Um, Yeah. Even encouraging it and, and thinking he said the right things. Well, speaking of the two, like it was 2018 that the prison riot over food happened. And that was because there's a company. And of course it's a foreign interest company. Right. It's not like we're not making money off of this in locally. No, it's an American um, corporation, right? Some kind of corp. Actually, I think it's good old Britain. Oh, okay. I believe it might be British. <laughs> they love their British. They're, so they're royalists. Yeah, so they got, I, and I think they're UK, uh, certainly situated, uh, Compass Foods. And that was quietly approved again. Right. Uh, this last year. And the food is... Like for him to make that joke and for us to know after what happened with Kamloops, the, the people who are 90% incarcerated in shitty jails that are old as hell and mm-hmm. sick and, and, and overcrowded and disgusting. I don't think people understand how disgusting it is. Like yeah. you can't clean it anymore. Like it's no, not possible. Right. Yeah. Um, and they always, so their whole thing too, oh, remand center, but I'll get back to that. Um, but this food and stuff is like, when you see this Kamloops thing and part of that, we did a fast, a solidarity fast with the, with the, on Canada day for the every child matters movement and stuff. The blood of the people in there are people who have been in the care, care, I'm putting quotes, air quotes, if you can't see me, the care of the state since they were like four. Um, people who are very low skilled, people who have not been assessed for disability, people who haven't been helped. And these, you know, as they're mourning these children's graves on the inside, these are the same, these are the children of survivors. Right. And a lot of them are survivors themselves. And I just, I just really hope Saskatchewan can see that paradox, that juxtaposed political I don't right. know what to call it, but yeah, but like yeah, criminals. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quote unquote criminals. Like yeah, yeah. members of an over-policed community who have been made to be criminals by the, just by the injustice system that we have. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, oh, that's a, but so <laughs> Sherry, like Sherry has no intention of backing down. Like she's, she's got a lot of like, like people on the inside, I think, you know, slowly they know they're incarcerated for now, but slowly you must chip away at it. Right. Uh, was that was a quote I heard from like a, a, a Métis writer talking about it. Okay. Um, who might like write for Briar Patch. Okay. Another like, yes, isn't that a Saskatchewan thing? To yep, a degree. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. 
<laughs> so yeah, it's I, I'm pretty sure Briar Patch is a sketch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I have trouble keeping up with all the Saskatchewan stuff. Well, there. Oh, yeah, and and there has been a. a I mean, speaking of Saskatchewan media, there has been an increase over the last few years of Saskatchewan focused, uh, progressive media. So it's, exactly. it's nice to see. It is. And, uh, like Corey, Corey spearheaded, I guess, the inmates for humane conditions. Right. And that is meant to act as a form of mutual aid and a form of a way, like, when you're talking about compass foods, let's go also to that. There is a, in the middle of Sask pan, there's a concession, right? So if you got right. the money, you could buy extra stuff, right? The prices are like three or four or five up to seven times higher than Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's strictly owned by like, and I guess it's supply. I don't know all the details, so I won't go into the details, but it's something that I've been researching for a while. And that was part of the riot too, where like they're they're getting ripped off, their families are getting ripped off. Yeah. Uh, the telmate system rips them off. So essentially, you're just looking at like a, people being bled uh, who are have nothing to bleed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like you say, and then they're stuck in a in a position where even when they come out, like then they yeah. They're they're already behind the eight ball in in terms of how they're going to build their life within this very biased system, this very one sided system. Oh, totally. And I have some interviews on True North Radio. If you got the link, you can check them out. Um, that uh, with people who are recently released, they were released into destitution. Right. They're released with no resources. Yeah. Um, released where like if they were on medication or they had to have psychiatric diagnosis on the inside and they were receiving medication as monitored by the inside, once they got out, remanded, tried to get placed, their medication gets all, uh, you know, messed up for several weeks. That's not healthy. That's not okay. That's total <laughs> no, that's abuse. Right. Yeah. yeah. So there's like, so there's so many layers to, to, to the abuse that happens. Like, so yeah, yeah. It's pretty I, my brother, uh, he was in, in, uh, Regina. So, uh, so I, I have a little bit of experience with that. Like, uh, he, we had to take him money regularly because he, he still smoked. So he had to be able to buy cigarettes yeah. and like yeah. couldn't buy snacks or whatever, unless he had money. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, it's not, it's not a good place for people to be. And it's not rehabilitating people oh, the way that yeah. you know like that's not a thing that's happening <laughs> yeah love those twitter posts by the canadian correctional services oh, yeah. that are like have a canada flag and like a buffalo and stuff and they're like yeah we're really working hard here to make amends you know oh yeah and it's like it's so blatant too because it's right. like there's no resources you there is no resources there no. is no rehabilitation like Corey, he gets out. He's not. He they knew he ha was an addict, right? They you know they knew that there were certain things that that could have prevented his death, and nothing was done. Um, yeah, of so, course. So yeah, because to the system, he's just he doesn't matter, right? Like yeah. nobody matters to the system. No. It's it's yeah. It, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't really have the words to say. So fun, isn't it? It's so depressing. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's nice to talk to you, though. No, it's great. No, I do. Yeah, no. So, well, I'm kind of excited because what excites me and like the you know these are heavy issues. And yeah. to me, sometimes if you don't approach heavy stuff with a like one thing like on True North Radio, if like Corey Cardinal phoned in, or if you were talking, we had a we had a rap night. We had okay. an Aboriginal storytelling night. Nice. But we were featuring rappers and the rappers came on and all oh, these rappers <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> nice. And like, if you want to know the breakdown of Canada and how people are feeling, you can listen to the rappers, especially yeah. on the inside. Yeah. So, um, you know, that was something where I, I kind of, my whole point of doing True North Radio was like, can we have a narrative that celebrates people sometimes? For sure. You know, can we have a narrative where you, like, these are regular people who live in our community? Like we were saying at the beginning, you know, like these are people that we grew up with that we went to high school with, like, yeah. or, or, you know, they don't stop being people. 
because yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> and that's how the guys totally frame it when they were like phoning is that we feel like we stopped being human right as soon as we came in here like we weren't canadian citizens we weren't anything so just stuffed into a cell just, and... yeah warehouse so the sas party can count ahead so they can get their money from trudeau <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> because <laughs> because despite the name liberal <laughs> They feed the system the same way the conservatives do, right? Like it's all the same. Uh, it's all the same parties feeding the same system, right? It's like the same interests are invested on both yeah. sides. They don't care. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. not that I want to pretend like like we said at the start. Like we don't want to say, uh, you know, uh, that all politicians are identical, right? Right. Because right. If there's somebody doing something work on the ground, then that's. A slightly different situation, but Justin Trudeau and Scott Moe, their interests don't aren't that different, actually. No, they <laughs> they align really well behind the scenes, yeah. backdoor deals, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that too. <laughs> well, I guess we might as well do the counter propaganda. And what you have here is the media narrative during the initial wave of COVID-19 as it relates to prisoners, charter rights, and human rights. Right. The media missed a mark in a big way. Huge way. Um, Yeah. It made me think, uh, like you also said, not seeing much independent thought. And I have a friend, uh, we do book reviews for part of the show. Yeah. And one of his (laughs) things is like, okay, so I don't want to necessarily insult journalists, but journalists in general are not a very intellectually curious bunch they take what's given to them as a you know a press release and they just write it as a story there's yeah. not a lot of like journal quote unquote journalism going on there yeah but exactly well like my favorite journalist in the whole world is julian assange like <laughs> I, I journalism it's about giving the facts but at the same time it's about framing it too like and when you live in a place like Saskatchewan, like you, we know that there's going to be a heavy, heavy black boot framing, yeah, you know, yeah, the narrative. Right. And I mean, if you say anything out of the, out of the, out of the ordinary, you know, you're already, you know, you're a full on commie. Um, <laughs> uh, but not that the, there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> no, of course. No, of course not. I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, Tr- Trotsky, I love you still to this day. Um, but yeah, like independent thought, critical thinking, right? Yeah. I have a brain. I can use it. I can. And like council culture has a lot to do with this too, where it's like, oh, we're not listening to them anymore. We're not reading that anymore. We're not doing this anymore. Use your brain. God, you're given a brain. <laughs> like you can use it. You can so use like, it. Yeah. 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 And I think the framing in Saskatchewan with the Saskatchewan media, I mean, I'm just feeling a real corporate vibes off of it. Well, I mean, Uh, it is all owned by big companies, right? All all, uh, like global and CTV and even CBC is our national news. But I mean, they run themselves just like any other news organization that is a giant company. And yeah, and it was disgusting, like to call it a trick, to hear Cory Cardinal speak, to hear Cory Cardinal speak about the dehumanization, to hear him talk about decolonization, to hear him talk about things that need to happen, and to have the media call it a tray refusal. Um, right, right. Was really yeah. disgusting. Like, and it, it's, it goes with that cattle mentality that they kind of have. Right. Um, where once you're kind of behind bars, you're, 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 you're kind of, you can make fun poke fun you can make silly jokes about stuff you can you know and i i find it just really unacceptable so yeah for sure it's it's very much uh like you say even as a society like we we automatically dismiss uh people who have been incarcerated and then the media as a result can like you say use uh, make little jokes or dismiss what they're like their protests like they can call yeah. a hunger strike like a serious protest inside uh, a tray refusal like right. like that like you can just do that because society doesn't actually care about people who are incarcerated and that's an, to me that's an abuse of power and yeah. the, and journalists like to be a journalist to read and write at that level i know you have some education yeah. You know, yeah. I know you didn't miss all the liberal, co- the the humanities classes that you were forced to take. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, like 
So to me, if you have, a, you have to, everybody, I guess, who has a platform big enough has to accept that there's some power that goes with that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you're going to call yourself a journalist, like maybe you yeah. should be committed to the truth a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there you go. I love that line. I like that line. I'm going to steal that line, com- uh, comrade. I'll no worries. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, uh, there he was a time when the truth mattered. And I, I, you know, that kind of takes me to like my political ideology overall is like, y'all, do you place Assassin's Creed? I I do not, but I have in the past. Oh, but yeah, in the past too, (laughs) long before children and diapers and formula and all. Um, But nothing is true. Everything is permitted is an Mm. ancient sort of creed uh, used by military cultures. Right. Military castes and like military ideologies throughout history. And it's sort of like at this point in history, you're sort of looking with hearts that can connect. Like you're looking for like, who is the enemy? I don't know. They're making it seem like everyone. Right. Uh, but maybe everyone is conspiring for you too. So it's like a matter of like, uh, kind of like just shifting our perspective. And I see with like our local, like being on the show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And having like True North Radio and stuff that, we're sort of reclaiming that yeah. for ourselves where, where we're going to make our own reality here on the ground because we see a different reality. Well, yeah, yeah. we experience a different reality, right? Than what's portrayed yeah, in the media. Exactly. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, there's a, a line in uh, anarchist circles where everything is a psyop <laughs> and it say it seems really conspiratorial. Like you're like, oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. There's, there's some real things going on, but <laughs> of course. But, <laughs> but it it really is like once you start learning about media a little bit, like everything kind of is a psyop. Everything is framed in a certain way, editorialized yeah. in a yeah. certain way, and exactly, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I know. I feel like that the political like. The political wave in Saskatchewan has got to watch out for us. You know, <laughs> for the, I mean, I'm not a millennial. I am considered whatever was before that. I think it's called Gen, Gen X. X. Yeah. Ah, that's yeah. me. Oh, that's me too. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Gen X for the win on this. <laughs> like, you know, we were raised by the time the 90s came. Like, I was a teenager in North Battleford. I was yeah. like, I felt like I was already dead. Like, right. I was like, what? Like, <laughs> what do we have to look forward to? You know, like, um, well, we were raised in what they called the end of history. Right. They literally called it the yeah, end of history. Yeah, they literally did. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so, for that. What were we so, supposed to think? We took it literally. So we're like, right. ah, well, we're making our own now. Yeah, that's right. Um, but I feel like youth always gets written off. And yeah. I feel like the teenager, like when I was a teenager and in my early 20s and trying to make it and in my early 30s trying to make it still, <laughs> uh, seeing people go home, going home and living with mom and dad in North Battleford is like normal. Everybody yeah. does. Some people stay forever. Right. Um, there's no work um, unless like there's work, but it's contract, okay, perilous yeah. work, like, you know, yeah. contract shitty work, um, right. especially if you have kids. Um so I just see that I just see like really a stagnant o- economy as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think Gen X for the win on this, please, Gen X, speak up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so foes and comrades, let's go there. Ah, okay. So you've got Rosemary Falk, MP for Battleford's Lloyd constituency. Right. Uh, not a friend to the people. Not a friend. Uh, certainly a false friend. Uh, uh, maybe a maybe a she's trying to put on the sheep you know trying to put on the sheep's clothing but there's a wolf under there um uh you know t- she sent me a letter because i harassed her she's our battleford's lloyd minister member of parliament right. and i have been emailing her since uh, the andrew Shear years oh yeah um because north 99 they're like a kind of a grassroots sort of organization that are political on the ground in ontario i believe um, so I've been keeping my eye on her, emailing her. I've sent many, many emails. I've had very few responses. Okay. Um, I sent the last email I sent was regarding Kamloops because there was an important NDP vote coming up, whether she was going to stand in solidarity with, uh, with some of this, uh, these actions. And I got a lovely letter back from her, but 
the fact is, is like, how can I trust you? Well, yeah. Y- you know, right. you're you, Peter, like O'Toole is like lives up to his name. No, I uh, Ro- yeah, Rosemary's like, I mean, it's nice that they're committed. They're committed to Truth and Reconciliation Commission 70, uh, uh, Action 70 through 76 or 78, I believe. Okay. But that is what we're in the process of doing, right. which is uncovering the horror so that the people can heal. That's That was an action that was called for a long time ago. And I'm yeah. sorry, that's not good enough because everybody in a position of power in federal should be following those actions. Yeah. So I just, and I just feel like, how can I trust you? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's uh, <laughs> 70 to 76 out of 94. That's not very bad. <laughs> no. And that again, trying to like make it like nice little letter you sent there, Rosemary. Right. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. But it's not going to cut the mustard. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, she's and, a foe, definitely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, and to compare, we have uh, comrades. You've got uh, Nicole Sowers and Mira Conway. I do. So the friends of the people here. <laughs> they, <laughs> That's good. But Nicole is like amazing. And she has done exactly what we were talking about earlier. Is right. that she made grassroots legislation come to fruition. So that people who are experiencing domestic violence in their apartments didn't have to pay $2,500 to some corporate entity before they could leave. Right. And they shouldn't have to stay there. But, and she, you know, she followed through on that and she had, a, you know, she was talking and that made, so that made a huge difference for people living in Saskatoon. Right. And to me, she was a friend, like a real friend. For sure. And uh, Mira Conway, she came to our sis, she again, she was, she got in the last election. Regina right. Epplestone Center. Yeah. Don't know exactly. She's. Yeah. Elphinstone uh, is, is kind of, yeah, it's kind of downtown ish. Okay. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> and she's a, uh, she was a lawyer. She is a legal aid lawyer. Right. Um, but she came down the, the lighthouse in North Battleford is our emergency center shelter. We only have one. It's patronized by about. It's 22 to 25 of the same people. Uh, okay. And this is North Belford. This is a small place. Right. Like yeah. they cut that funding. They Like, I mean, down to nothing. Yeah. And they did that earlier. They did that in like 2016, 2017 budgets too. But like I said, with STC, like we're not going to get involved with being aligned with the poor. Of course. <laughs> you know, the yeah. inmates or anybody like that. Um. But she came down and she spoke at our rally and it was huge, like for the center of North Battleford. I know it sounds, you know, but this is what I'm talking about regional and local is that we had like 45 plus people. We had tons of signs. You had people dropping off donuts and food just because they believed in the cause. Right. Um, You know, you had people showing up. One thing I like to do is when I go to a rally or something like that, I like to see who doesn't, who doesn't show up. (laughs) Right. Because I'm like, this is, again, this is being framed as like, people don't want to be near things that where poverty is involved. But the fact of the matter is, this is a city. Uh, People live here. This is a shelter. It offers this. This is healthcare, right? We ought, we get resources for people who can't access them. But people frame it like it's, something totally out of the ordinary right. i thought that's how civilization ran like, <laughs> yeah like, right there are people who need things and this is where they get those things <laughs> yes and when she came yeah and when she came down her like her she really spoke to the power dynamic she really right. spoke to the issues that like to things that i felt like needed to be said and there was a big group of people there and the media were there and everybody was there and it drew attention to our city and i felt like she was a friend to the people that's awesome <laughs> yes no that's good yeah so yeah well uh yes. we're approaching the end of our time we are where, where can people find you and your content <laughs> <laughs> well i on on youtube by true north radio on youtube uh, at home fire sask on twitter um and my i have a personal facebook but i just use it so i can like you know facebook is one of those <laughs> things now maybe this is a gen x thing Could but be. facebook is one of those things where i'm just like oh i want to die i have to <laughs> scroll through this place like mark zuckerberg uh. so yeah. i mean i'm on there but 
I think I'd keep it to, you know, Twitter and the Twitter verse and also to the YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm an old guy. So, so Facebook is my, my home domain. Hey, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is separate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although I'm getting into Instagram. Oh, I'm having a lot I, more on Instagram. I like Instagram it. is fun, and I abandoned it for quite some time. Yeah. And I'm seeing though that the TikTokers now these are people yes. who are way younger than me, but it, uh, <laughs> for the most part. Um, but I'm seeing that as a really cool way to get like two minutes of vital information out. Yep. So yep. yeah, it's yeah. I I love TikTok actually. Like even yeah. if, even if you're like. Cause I, I get a lot of social justice stuff on my TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, it's fun. But even, <laughs> even the stuff that isn't social justice, it's just fun stuff that makes me smile or I can laugh, you know? So yeah. TikTok's is, TikTok is great. I don't know well, why so many people don't like it. You know what? I think you've sold me. Like, it might end up, it'll, be, it'll be if I can possibly get my handle. Yeah. Yeah, time, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So. No, it's just, it's a cool interview. Thank you so much. Like yeah. it was, like, thank you for of, joining me. 